the project corporation and the scientific community. Um, I am not the boss of the science collaborations, um, although I can help you be in touch with whoever you might need to uh, if you choose to do so. Um, each one of the science collaborations essentially has its own set of rules. Uh, they're in charge of developing their own publication policies, for example, um, and their own applications. Um, some of them are more complicated than others, uh, but my goal at the end of this talk is that you will have the information that you need to go find out um, what it might take to apply. Generally speaking, it's a very straightforward process. So, uh, in terms of who can belong to an LSST science collaboration, um, this is the big list of mostly the international contributors, um, the individual institutions and um, collaborations underneath each one of the country names, and also, of course, the United States and Chile. Um, the, uh, you'll hear more about this from Pat Lyason, who talk about the LSST Corporation, um, but they essentially facilitate joining uh, the, the LSST project um, as a member with data rights. And so, uh, in the era of LSST, we're thinking that these science collaborations will become the seeds of actual working collaborations um, that will be dealing with the LSST data and software itself. Currently, there are about nine uh, LSST collaborations. You'll, you'll notice these are largely topical grouped. Um, so for example, uh, galaxies or stars in Milky Way at local volume, transients and variable stars, large scale structures, strong lensing, informatics and statistics, and solar system and dark energy, and active galactic nuclei. Uh, in a moment, you'll hear from Anne Connolly, who will speak to you about uh, the so-called DESK, or the Dark Energy Science Collaboration. Um, this is a, warrants its own presentation in the sense that um, the model of that particular collaboration is a lot uh, more structured. It's based on uh, particle physics collaborations, and therefore has uh, somewhat more elaborate rules of a larger membership. Um, than many of the others do. Uh, each one of these, uh, of the other collaborations essentially has, I would say, somewhere between 50 and 100 members. Um, some of them represent mergings of existing uh, collaborations from before. So example, for example, there used to be a separate supernova collaboration that was recently joined into vari variable stars and transients. Uh, each one of the names underneath these, uh, if you're interested in joining a science collaboration, are the science collaboration chairs. Um, so again, the collaborations develop their own rules and their set of structures. So many of them have chairs, some of them have, uh, well, all of them have chairs. Many have spokespeople as well. Um, but these are, should essentially be thought of as your points of contact um, for each one of these collaborations. Um, now that we're past the writing of the LSST science book, um, the science collaborations are involved in that second part of what I mentioned at the beginning of the talk, which is uh, providing that scientifically motivated feedback to the survey implementation. Obviously, LSST is many things to many people, depending on your scientific interest. Um, and first and foremost, it's a telescope. And that telescope can be used in a wide variety of ways. Um, you've heard of sort of the nominal cadences and plans for um, operations uh, from Jelko and Mario earlier, uh, but one of the things that we've um, been working with as collaborations of the, uh, the past year or so, even a little bit more, is developing quantitative metrics that help to evaluate the observing strategy. So in other words, we have a telescope that is capable of many things. How do we go about actually implementing the survey, um, and how do we understand the trade-offs that we make between different survey design decisions? There is a wonderful series of simulations, as was mentioned earlier, the operation simulator and the image simulators. Um, these can be used with uh, something called the metrics analysis framework, uh, which is essentially a way of developing quantitative ways of understanding different realizations <coughs> of the survey. So this is something that the science collaborations have been deeply involved with. Um, many of them have been quite active in preparing uh, the observing strategy white paper, which I'll show you momentarily. And that uh, white paper will become available later um, this year. It's actually just going through the LSST Publications Board right now as a living document that um, you can also see what's there, see if your particular science case is not there, um, and become involved in uh, helping to quantify those choices. In addition, each one of the science collaborations is involved in uh, outlining and implementing roadmaps for the path to LSST science. So that doesn't just mean, you know, what would I like to 
to have already in the uh, era of you know, day one of LSST operations. It actually also means um, things that might happen in the, in the interim time. So for example, um, understanding a very faint, fast variable sky. Um, LSST obviously in a single visit reaches depths that are uh, comparable to many end products of the other surveys. And so there are certain aspects of um, various people's science that they might want something available. Um, some of this again ties into uh, level three data products. So what kind of ancillary catalogs would you like to have? For example, would you, be, would you want to be able to cross-correlate a source with um, a radio galaxy of catalog, for example? Um, so the, each one of the science collaborations thinks about that from their own um, topical point of view. And so they work individually on these sort of topical interests, in addition to working um, really together on something like the observing strategy white paper that allows them to um, work as a group towards implementing a single survey that would be useful for the broadest number of science cases. In addition, um, besides just the nominal cadence, we also have uh, other sort of what you can think of as specialized mini surveys, um, sometimes also called deep drilling fields. These are regions on the sky that may be observed with a different cadence outside of the nominal LSST cadence. And so um, one of the roles that the, uh, the LSST Science Collaboration has played over the years and continues to play is suggesting um, particular fields for deep drilling, uh, looking at what cadences could be used there, looking at what the trade-offs are against that the main survey, and helping to plan for those, and also asking, working with the simulations team to implement um, those fields or implementations of that extra bit of time in with the main survey to understand how it impacts the realization of the survey as a whole. In addition to this, um, one of the things, although uh, Mario was, and his wife pointed out, um, plans for commissioning are still sort of TBE in the works. And of course, commissioning's primary goal is the science ver the verification of the system. Um, so. It's not just open season on uh, whatever we want to do with the telescope during that time because the system itself has to be verified. But the science collaborations do have a role to play in determining what might serve dual purposes of making early science and also providing uh, system verification. And broadly, on a sort of astro-sociological level, the science collaborations foster um, cooperation within the scientific community, whether it's in the US or abroad that can help um, make the best use of the telescope when it is actually um, on the sky. And in addition to that, to help marshal things like resources, for example, um, for follow-up of LSST transients and variable stars. Um, I would be remiss if I did not mention uh, the LSST Corporation and its role in enabling the activities of the science collaborations. We're going to hear much more about this from Pat Elias and momentarily. Um, but the science collaborations are eligible to apply for um, enabling science funds. So this is a call that happens um, uh, usually once or twice a year, and uh, Pat will tell you much more about that. But the LSSTC and the Enabling Science Committee have really been instrumental in um, allowing some of these uh, activities that I'm about to tell you about to happen. So providing seed funding. Um, to, you know, for example, have meetings um, or to send people to existing meetings to help foster the um, kind of communication and collaboration on work um, that needs to happen in the near term. So just to give you a flavor and an overview of some of the activities uh, that have been happening recently, um, these are actually just over the past year or so. Uh, so, for example, um, in Pittsburgh, they just recently had the photo scene workshop. Uh, the goal of which was to define requirements, improve the simulations, and design data challenges around improving photo Z methods. Back in March, the Transients and Variable Stars Science Collaboration had a road mapping workshop. Um, as you would imagine, just saying transients is a very, very broad and assorted group of scientific goals. Um, so the Transients and Variable Stars is an example of a collaboration where um, they're grouped into topical subgroups, actually. So there's a bit of um, substructure underneath that umbrella science collaboration. Um, so whether you're interested in, for example, uh, classification of the LSST alert stream, or whether you're interested in supernovae or flare stars, um, there's some working groups within that larger collaboration. And um, one of the things they're doing is working together to provide a roadmap for what are the things that press most on the LSST cadence, what are the things that are most demanding um, in terms of being able to understand 
understand uh, how to make use of the LSST data. One example of that would be um, the development of brokers. Uh, Mario briefly mentioned um, some of the work that's going on in the US at the moment, um, but certainly uh, more eyes could be uh, very welcome to develop um, event brokers for the LSST alert stream and work on sifting through that, uh, what we anticipate to be a very large but very rich alert stream of transient and variable events. Um, the Dark Energy Science Collaborations, as I'm, I'm sure you'll hear about from Andy, um, have a series of schools and half days. Um, this is in, now in its second year. Um, they have about 50 attendees per school and about two thirds uh, grad students and postdocs from past two schools. So very much focused on um, the younger community in astronomy and uh, growing the new users of LSST. There was also a cross-correlation workshop at Brookhaven National Labs um, just about uh, a little less than a month ago, I guess, or about a month ago, um, that was looking at what kind of ancillary catalogs might be available. Um, just literally two weeks ago, there was an uh, entire conference on statistical challenges in modern astronomy, um, one of a series in which uh, the LSSTC funded a um, particular day that was concerned with LSST um, specific things. Uh, we just, uh, in the U.S., had our uh, summer meeting of the American Astronomical Society, or AAAS, and the Milky Way and Local Volume Collaboration had a small working group meeting there. Um, one of the things that they're very interested in is um, cryo field photometry and uh, understanding plans and what their requirements are. Um, I encourage you uh, to go and look at um, one of the sort of cross-cutting um, activities within the science collaborations, and that's the observing strategy. Uh, white paper. This will make it sort of official release uh, in a little while, but you can already read the uh, Observing Strategy white paper in its current state online. It's hosted on GitHub, and um, uh, Mario made this very fancy uh, link shortener for LSST. <laughs> um, so that's actually a web page up there to make your life easier with a shorter, uh, shorter URL. But as you can see, you can read the current draft. Um, you can look at the, um, the issues list. Uh, for things that people are talking about. Um, you can suggest a new OPSIM or the Operation Simulator Experiment. And you can see, more importantly, what the collaborations have been up to um, in terms of working on this white paper and the kinds of things that are being thought about. And I encourage you to do that because if you're a person who uh, is intending to become part of the LSST community, these are all activities that you can join. Um, and similarly, there are activities where if you don't see that something is happening, um, that's an opportunity for you to uh, spearhead that effort. Um, over the, uh, the next year or so, uh, there are various um, roadmaps that are at various uh, levels of uh, completion at this point. Um, I just wanted to highlight a few. I mentioned at the very bottom here the LSST uh, Transients and Variable Stars Roadmapping Workshop just really, uh, really recently. Um, in addition, uh, the American Astronomical Society, again in uh, January, was coming here in 2017. The AGM Science Collaboration um, will be working on developing their roadmap. Um, there's also a larger extragalactic roadmap that's in the works, um, which I uh, encourage you to get in touch with either the AGM or um, the Galaxies Collaboration if you're interested in learning about that. I'll show you an example of the LSST Solar System um, observing strategy work. They had a, a roadmap meeting. Um, I'll just give you a little tour of their website from this. You can find this um, from their collaboration webpage, which I'll show you in a moment. Um, but you can see that they had an entire meeting um, just a little bit over a year ago that they met and um, put together a preliminary draft, science requirements on moving objects. Um, they re reported on the current stat of, uh, status of MOPS, which is the moving object. Um, so you can go and look and see what all of these collaborations are up to and where um, there might be somewhere for you um, to either join an existing effort or spearhead your own. Um, the informatics collaboration asks that I uh, make you aware of this opportunity, which is the 2016-2017 McCain SANSI program on asterisk statistics. There's a little blurb there that you're welcome to read if you want to. Um, but the, uh, the upshot is that um, this will be held <coughs> over um, the next year, that there is an opening workshop um, coming up in August, very end of August, and there are um, opportunities for you to do extended visits to SAMSI um, in addition to postdoctoral positions. And so um, please be in touch with Babu if uh, you would like to.
to. That's his address at the bottom there. Um, and I'd be happy to, of, of course, I realize this is all going by in you know, rapid, rapid fire mode. So if any of these addresses that you've seen have gone by too quickly, I'm happy to provide them again after the talk. Uh, as you can see, our collaborations are busy. Uh, coming up next month, there'll be a Galaxy's workshop in Oxford. Um, there's also the uh, most recent desk meeting, which I'm sure Andy will speak about, and continued dark energy schools and hack days. Um, there's uh, newly proposed uh, workshops for transients and variable stars, and of course, core informatics group that people are talking about their next steps in light of this upcoming SAMSI meeting. Um, most importantly, international partners, uh, our international contributors, are now joining the collaboration. So we're seeing a filtering in and integration of um, some of our international members, which is uh, very exciting for us. And we're really uh, very happy to have um, this contribution from all of our international friends to make uh, LSST really a worldwide facility um, on the whole. So uh, briefly, to wrap up, I just want to let you know where you can learn more about this. Obviously, um, I hope you've gotten from the flavor of this talk that there is a, a wealth of ongoing activity, and it just really sort of depends where your interests lie, where you should look. Um, but some basic resources are, for example, the LSST Science Collaboration web pages. Um, you can also find this if it goes by without uh, catching it. You can Google LSST Science Collaborations and you will end up here. You'll notice that uh, each one of these science collaborations has a, a link, um, and there's also a link to me. Um, so you can click on any of these um, that are linked here, and it will get you to the collaboration webpage. Um, these are maintained by the science collaborations. This is Galaxies, for example, where you can see that they have you know, a blurb about the basic goals. Um, up the top, there's a menu that outlines projects, documents. You can look up what projects they're currently thinking about, look through to something that you're interested in, um, maybe take a look at and see if there's some relevant figures, um, anything that you particularly want. Um, in a moment, you'll also see there's lists of members, um, so you can see if there's any of uh, your current collaborators that are available there. And you can also, um, from almost every, uh, well, from every science collaboration webpage, there will be a link to apply, and also contact information for the leadership of that science collaboration. Um, and it will tell you a little bit about your eligibility criteria, et cetera. But broadly, it's anyone with LSST data rights, so international contributors um, and members of the US and Chilean community. Um, you'll also see featured projects in particular, and this is just to, to amp for Andy's talk uh, about the desk, um, where occasionally there are data challenges, and this again can give you um, flavor for things that you might join or places that you might look for uh, openings that are, would be interesting. Um, lastly, uh, we're coming to the last bit here, uh, there's also the community um, webpage. So community.lssu.org is a um, discussion board where you can uh, participate with the community. You'll, you'll notice that a lot of this is very focused on data management, but I'm going to show you that you can click on um, science. There are categories at the top. And if you click down onto science there, you'll see that this is um, folks talking about um, development. This is all public. You can make an, a, a, a um, login if you care to, but it's also publicly readable, so you can see some of the activities that are going on. And in particular, we're uh, currently planning on there for the LSST Project and Community Workshop, which is taking place in August in Tucson. Um, the registration for that is open now, um, so you can go and look and see already even some of the things that uh, we're thinking about doing there. Um, furthermore, uh, I am a resource. <laughs> so um, I hold office hours, uh, just like you would for students. I sit at Google Hangout twice a month. Um, this is a new idea, so far it's going great. <laughs> um, I realize uh, that this um, particular idea, this particular time slot might not be great for those of you um, in your time zones, but if enough of you suggested, I'd be happy to make a later in the afternoon one so that you can uh, call in. And I encourage you to be in touch with me as well because I'm always happy um, to either communicate via email or um, to make an appointment. Um, the, uh, the next one is actually on the 29th of June um, if you want to get up early or early. <laughs> um, or feel free to ask me for another time and I'll be happy to talk to you about any of um, the things that you've seen here. 
Um, and before I hand it off, uh, I just want to say one of the other things that the collaborations have been um, involved in and uh, something that's supported by the LSSTC is that we have a new um, data science fellowship program. Um, and so this is a supplement to graduate curricula uh, that will be taking place over two years um, that will essentially supplement people with the skills that they need to um, partake in LSST data analysis. Um, that's something that I'm directing, and there are several members of the leadership team here. Um, so if you're interested in learning more, we just closed admissions for the first one, but there'll be some next year. Um, so if you get started now, we'll be ready then. Um, so I hope that I've convinced you that the LSST, um, although it is currently being built, is an active community of scientists that are already up and thriving, and uh, I very much encourage you to come be part of that.
community has to input to one of the key days coming up? Like T minus five years. Um, <laughs> well, it's not so T minus now, five for 19, is it? Or 20, so. Well, so now, um, so the observing strategy, uh, observing strategy white paper um, that was developed over the past year is a living document, but eventually um, it will uh, dovetail with the existence of the actual physical telescope, in which case we will implement um, the observing strategy at that point. So um, my, uh, my sort of underlying message here is don't wait until first light of LSST or commissioning of LSST, because there's plenty to be done now. So is that a line somewhere? It is what a line? The timeline. Is the construction timeline on there somewhere, or is the timeline? So the science development timeline. Right. So um, I would say no, because it depends on your science, and it depends on the collaboration you want to be involved in. And so it, it kind of depends on what exact thing you're interested in. But what I would encourage you to do is to be in touch with the leader of the science collaboration whose effort um, you're going to contribute to and see what their working timeline is because it's, uh, there's no sort of like science timeline because everything is happening now um, and into the future. So whether bits and pieces of that need to be developed in various timelines probably depends on the collaboration. Um, I, I'm Pat Osmer, I'm helping with the LSST Corporation and Pat Elias on just these questions of how we support enabling science. And my quick answer is, I think some of them need help and some of the immediate uh, things are finishing uh, the roadmaps that uh, Lucian mentioned in their talk. But uh, we're actually in the process of developing how we can support collaborations better. So I'd love to talk with you others know, offline while we're here during the meeting. One of our functions here, uh, as Pat will describe, uh, momentarily we're talking how to help push these collaborations ahead. So very topical question, thanks for bringing it up. So, uh, let's thank the speaker again, and then uh, next, uh, <laughs> next speaker is Andy Connolly, Dutch Energy Science and Collaboration.
may indicate some sort of clustering, some particle-based um, uh, solutions to dark energy. And the, the elephant in the room is really, that is it, um, does it require some modification to general relativity for Einstein's field equation, including some sort of F of R um, perturbation to, uh, to G of R, um, to general relativity. The recognition that this touches on the early universe as well as on gravity led to uh, the Department of, Department of Energy being interested in LSST and a range of other dark energy experiments, including DESI um, and the Next Generation CMB experiments. These experiments together with LSST, Euclid, and WFIRST produce a, uh, an ensemble of experiments um, that will enable us to understand and characterize the nature of dark energy um, over the next decade. Um, DOE is interested in this, um, is evident because DOE is supporting the development of campus. There are five primary probes that uh, DESC focuses on. There's uh, gravitational weak lensing, which is primarily the um, mass power spectrum and its evolution with redshift. And this is a probe of the growth of structure associated um, uh, with dark energy. Um, large scale structure, for um, LSST's perspective, large scale structure means the angular clustering of galaxies in narrow photometric redshift bins. Um, and in, in practice, it's the uh, BAO signal and its evolution with redshift. And this is uh, both a geometric and a growth of structure um, test of uh, the probe of dark energy. We have galaxy clusters and the cluster abundance as a function of mass and how that evolves with redshift, which again tests uh, growth of structure. Um, type 1a supernovae for the standard luminosity distance estimators and also uh, strong lensing. So multiple lens sources are measuring the time delays associated with these. <coughs> and this is a measure of, uh, of geometry. So these five kind of core science themes make up the five main science themes associated with uh, with them. If you are interested in the details of the science cases associated with DESC, the project or the collaboration itself started in June of uh, 2012. Um, there is a white paper that describes the major science objectives. And a uh, question for John is, are we posting these um, talks? Yeah. Great. OK, so the, the, um, the slides will be posted and all the links so you don't actually have to, um, to write this down. Um, this, if it's a few years old, it's not as old as the, um, as the uh, science book, but it gives a nice overview of what we're trying to achieve with um, in the current test. Currently, we're, we're one of the larger um, science collaborations. There's uh, about 490 members. 156 of these are full members. I'll explain a little bit later what the difference between a member and a full member is. You can see that the distribution of these uh, of the membership is about 25% non-US, 75% US. Uh, this will change over the next year as the UK contingent joins. Um, you can also see that it's a mix of university and um, DOE lab-based um, uh, researchers and scientists. So DOE labs mean um, Argonne National Lab, means Fermi Lab, it means Brookhaven, uh, Los Alamos, Lawrence Berkeley Lab, and um, SLAP, which is the host lab for, um, for the, the desk. Uh, because we're working at the interface of cosmology and astrophysics, there is also a broad range of members of the science collaboration um, combining both the particle physics community and the astrophysics community. The model for DESC, and I'll describe this in more detail as I go through, is really a high energy physics model, which means that we have operations, we have research, we fund both the computational requirements for the computational resources for the analysis and also the people associated with the, with the analysis itself. And this means that we have a broad range of interests of instrumentation, computing, observing, um, and theory. Uh, Lucy, I'm pointing to the website. You can find details um, at the website and also um, computational resources associated with analyzing best data, including simulated data leading up to uh, first light. We have a technical coordinator who is Aaron Rootman. Uh, who has the interface between DESC and the project, so understanding the instrumental performance of the LSST. I'm a computing coordinator who works on simulations and on the analysis framework that uh, DESC will be using for doing its dark energy science. 
And then the analysis coordinator is Rachel Mandelbaum, who focuses on those five uh, science cases. If we zoom in on these individual analysis, computing, and technical working groups, you can see the analysis working group has the five main science themes, and then there's two additional working groups uh, within, this, uh, within the analysis team. Photometric redshifts, because photometric redshifts are a core aspect of all of the science cases coming out of Dallas C, or the majority of the science cases coming out of the dark energy um, aspect of Dallas C. And also theory and joint probes, or TJP, which is um, trying to understand how we do inference or joint inference from all of the multiple probes to put constraints on the cosmology, and also to understand the uncertainties on those constraints uh, through large scale covariance. Um, computing is made up of cosmological simulations, so these are large n-body or hydro simulations that simulate uh, representative uh, volumes of the universe. Survey simulations, which are instrument simulations, from um, the image simulators such as FOSIM and GAUSIM. Uh, we work with the operations simulator, even though that's funded through the, uh, through the project. And then computing and infrastructure are the computational resources um, principally at uh, NERSC, which is where we have most of our compute resources, um, so, and the development of the software for the, the analysis frameworks. And then the technical team is uh, sensor anomaly, understanding the properties of the electricity sensors, and then the calibration. The sensor photometric calibration, the name of this uh, working group will change in the next uh, few weeks. It's the general calibration, including calibration of signals uh, or the impact of uh, effects such as uh, galactic extinction um, on, the, um, on the various science probes. Each one of the working groups has uh, two uh, co-conveners, uh, and you can see here that there is a nice mix of both lab-based, university-based, US, uh, non-US members, and also senior and junior members. And this is an important aspect of Bowen's desk, is the, the broad representation um, in all aspects so it's not just senior, it's not just lab, it's not just university, and it's not just US. So where are we going? Um, about, about a year ago, we started or we completed the Science Roadmap for DESC. The Science Roadmap, you can find this, it's a publicly available, it's a fairly terse document. It explains the objectives of uh, DESC science over the next three to four years. Uh, and this is a place where you can go in and find out what are we working on, what is interesting uh, with respect to your science, and how you can get involved. The, um, the way we thought about the development over the next few years, and this, these are in financial years, so FY 2016 started in September of 2015, and continues to, for, um, for, the, uh, for 12 months. The way we've been thinking about these analyses is in terms of a set of three sequential data challenges, leading up to first light with the commissioning camera, and then the full camera going on the LSSD. So this takes us through 2016, 2018, 2019, and 2020. Each one of these data challenges lasts for between 18 months and two years. Uh, to give you a flavor of this, the first data challenge that is uh, in the middle of analysis at the moment an example of that is the project called Twinkles, which is a small-scale, single CCD at the center of the LSST focal plane that is simulated for 10 years' worth of operation, ob observations, where we simulate um, supernovae and uh, gravitational lenses. And then the objective of Twinkles is to be able to do the end-to-end -end simulation, run it through the data management systems that Mario talked about, run it through light curve analysis, and then extract our science at the end. To give you a sense of the scaling, that is one CCD for 10 years um, in 2016. <clears throat> in 2018, we want to be able to do 300 um, uh, square degrees of simulated images. And by 2019, the, kind of, the current goal is to do about 3,000 square degrees of the sky. So, sorry, it's 300 square degrees in 2018 and 3,000 square degrees in about 2019, 2020. Uh, and to give you the, the, uh, an idea of the scale of the computational cost, to generate those simulated images will be about 250 rounds. <coughs> so a lot of resources are going into the development, and there's a lot of structure to the work that we're actually uh, developing. 
Um, so just to highlight a couple of areas of work that have been ongoing today, so to give you a flavor of what is in these, this SRM, this science roadmap, the, um, I'm just going to talk about uh, the Wheat Lensing Working Group, and we're going to look at their DC1. So this is the, net, the last um, nine months and the next six months of work. You can see examples of the work that are going on for the Wheat Lensing Group, including building an LSST module for the Gaussian image simulator. It includes um, doing null tests for the two-point correlation functions for, uh, for Wheat Lensing. And you can see for the next year, one of the objectives is to start to try and understand the software for modeling the PSM mm -hmm. of the LSST using wavefront data. And this will be done in conjunction with the, the LSST. So a lot of the work that comes through DESK is done in conjunction with the LSST project. Um, we see ourselves as enhancing some of the data products um, from the perspective of the cosmology. Um, and a number of, um, a significant number of LSST project members are part of this. To look at the uh, computational infrastructure, the last couple of, uh, the last nine months have seen a couple of uh, major uh, developments. One was understanding how much com compute resource we need. This led to use uh, to establishing NERSC, which is a supercomputing center at Lawrence Berkeley Lab. Um, as the primary host for computational resources, we have put in a request to, um, to the NERSC um, DOE project managers for a few hundred million CPU hours uh, from about 2020 onwards. Uh, we've also produced a, a major document that describes how we write software associated with, uh, with this. Um, and then as we move forward over the next year, we'll be starting to write prototype analysis frameworks for how to do end-to-end -end processing of LSST data using the data management um, software and, and enhancing it with the analysis framework that uh, that's for me. Uh, I think an important aspect about DESK is that it is a uh, relatively formal project. And this means that formality comes with, uh, with both the, the understanding of the need for resources, for the research, and for the operations. Um, and so one of the major objectives in the next three to four months is the development of an operations plan that how we will support science as we go through commissioning and into operations of the LSST. This means um, having Slack as the DOE host lab. It means um, supporting computer infrastructure personnel, so the people who develop and maintain the software. Pipeline support personnel, which means the astrophysicists and cosmologists, or the computationally literate astrophysicists and cosmologists who will work on making the science code scale up to the volume of the LSST data. And it also means um, putting together the computational resources that we need for LSST processing. Um, how do I join? Well, if your institute or country is a member, the application process is available on the um, LSST desk uh, website, which Luciana pointed you to. There are two sets of members. There's <coughs> members and full members. Members have access to all of the desk communication um, tools have access to the internal website and the documents that describe the roadmap associated with, um, with DESK. Full members have access to all the computer resources and the data products that DESK will generate. To become a full member, you have to make a commitment to the summit to, you have to commit to putting some of your research time into DESK. And the description of that commitment is, is available on the website. Um, if there is nothing that stops people becoming members because you're interested in, in tracking what DESK is doing. And then in a couple of years, as you transition towards LSST, transitioning over, over to full members. It is all dependent on where you feel that you fit in and how much how many resources and how much time you have available to devote to the, the dark human science. The tools available for DESK include wikis, mailing lists. We have a GitHub organization which hosts all of our code. And it's where we develop the majority of our documents. And so the, um, the SRM and the original white paper are all published um, either on the archive or on this web page. But the, um, you can have access directly to the, uh, the tech documents and figures and all of the issues associated with writing that documents by just joining this GitHub um, organization. 
We have biannual collaboration meetings. One meeting each year is held at SLAT, as the host lab. The other meeting is uh, spread around the country and around, around any of the collaboration members. This year, the next collaboration um, meeting will be in Oxford in July from the 18th to the 22nd. At this meeting, we start out every meeting with the Dark Energy School for one day, which introduces people to uh, dark energy science and also to some of the applications and tools and techniques that people use for um, analyzing dark energy uh, related data. We end every meeting with a hack day where people get together, they write up a proposal for something they, they want to work on for a day, they self organize and then they work on it for a day and then they present their results. And this, both the Dark Energy School and the Hack Days have been supported by the LSSTC that Pat will talk about, and this has been very important for this. And they've been, they've been great ways of generating energy and getting people involved. So I'd encourage you to, um, if your um, country or institute is a member of LSST, is to join the membership, whether it's as a full member or just or as a, a member, um, to come to the collaboration meetings, to get involved in the hack days. That's a very easy way to find out what people are doing, to find out how you can fit in, and what science is interesting. And if you want to present some new idea, you just have to get in touch with the, uh, the coordinators associated or the conveners associated with each working group. There's a huge amount of enthusiasm for having more people being part of, um, of this. If your institute or country is not a member, then you should ask your institute to, uh, to join. Um, so let me just wrap up with two very quick points. It's very clear from the work that we've done that one single analysis won't solve or enable us to understand the nature of dark energy. Each of the analyses have complementary sensitivities, they have complementary uncertainties, and they have complementary systematics associated with it. So it's the combination of all of these ideas and the combination of all of these different techniques that we expect to enable us to achieve the goals of a stage four dark energy science um, mission. This also means that it's not just LSST, there's also DESI, Euclid, and W first. Each one is approaching the question of dark energy from different perspectives in terms of the time scales, um, going through from 2018 to 2032, in terms of the instruments, spectroscopic through um, imaging, and in terms of the science probes that people are working with. And it's this combination of techniques and um, projects that I think will enable us to do the science, uh, or the dark energy science in the next decade. Alice at the desk focuses on LSST, there's a lot of overlap with DESI, with Euclid members, with W first, and there's a lot of cross fertilization going on. And so I think um, with Euclid being driven by, uh, by the European communities, there should be a lot of interest from Euclid members in terms of getting involved with, uh, with LSST and LSST. So LSSC, stage four, dark energy mission. Um, the important aspect is multiple probes, multiple working groups associated with DESC. LSSC DESC is actively preparing for the cosmological analysis of LSSC data. It's a collaborative and a concerted effort. It has a roadmap that explains the objectives of the next three to five years. Um, we are very interested and very welcoming to new members. We hope you will. Um, have already, we hope that you will um, join us. Thank you. So, questions? Roadmap. So if you go through the science roadmap, different groups such as 
the reflection group or clusters have talk about the methodologies they're expected to use and how they will implement them and how they'll test them. One of the aspects about the data challenges that we're doing is we try to define what the requirements are in the data challenge and what we're trying to test on each data challenge and then work our way through the analysis um, process. We're only in the first data challenge, so how well that system is going to work, I think, is something that's going to involve. So this has evolved a lot over time. Um, for example, the Supernova Working Group originally was a science collaboration working group and then it became a joint science collaboration and a DESK working group. The difference between, for example, those two would be the DESK focuses on the, on the dark energy aspects about supernovae, so type 1A supernovae. Where other supernovae come into being will be how do you separate out type 1As in, from, um, from other classes of supernovae using the LCT data. And then the other science working group would focus maybe more on the physics or, or the astrophysics associated with supernovae. And similar things with galaxies. Um, the properties of galaxies may be part of uh, the other, and a different science collaboration. How galaxies are used as traces of dark energy is part of that. This is very, it's kind of flexible. Um, like the supernova working group, I think, eventually merged into DESK and became one working group. So there's, there's, there's no hard and fast barrier between them, but in general, it's, it's the dark energy. Um, how do you use that probe for dark energy is, is the difference. Other questions? Yeah, I have a question. So, uh, thank you. Let's thank you again, the speaker. So for 
10 years where you could go back and look at this data. And the idea was to explore new frontiers um, that were searching for anything that moved, okay? Anything that was different, variant, uh, fainter, brighter, anything that was very, very faint. It was noted early that this instrument will look way out to the faintest, the most faint um, objects. And it is the, really the only instrument that is capable of doing that. So in 2003, uh, this small group um, got together, these leaders and innovators, and started the LSST Corporation. It's a nonprofit corporation. And it was put together basically to design, develop, build, and operate the large synoptic survey telescope. That was its whole mission. Okay? <laughs> and it was joined by over 35 institutions, organizations that came together and started really designing the telescope and thinking about how are we going to go deep, fast, and wide. It's not easy to do that, right? And most of these things have never been done before. So it's a big challenge. And um, the corporation was extremely instrumental at the beginning um, of getting over $60 million, um, mostly from private donations, okay? Dying private donors to kickstart the early development of the project. And um, one of the things to note is that the mirror, the primary mirror, which cost nearly $30 million, was funded by the corporation. And once that was, was fired and it was spinning, the government, the government agencies started to say, hmm, it looks like this is going to happen. We have something tangible now, not just spinning it. So in 2010, the uh, LSST was picked by the U.S. Decadal Survey to be the highest priority ground-based um, astronomy project. That was a huge thing. It's the top rating in, in the U.S. And that really solidified the cornerstone, getting the foot in the door to say, the government wants to build this along with these other people. So this was huge. So all the preliminary science efforts of the community um, really demonstrated the overall feasibility of that project. And I think it's really important to, to remember that the corporation's $60 million investment early on really leveraged the entire 640 plus million that followed to build the telescope and the facilities and the camera. And then voila, construction started in 2014, and things changed. All of a sudden, the corporation, which was in charge of everything, all the project, all the scientists, all the engineers, everybody, became a separate entity. All of the project people went to the project that was now being built by the government agencies. So this was a huge paradigm shift for us. All of a sudden now, we have a whole different vision. The telescope is getting built, um, fully subscribed, that's fine. But all of a sudden, there's not enough money to support the operations, for one thing, and to support any science in the future. Okay? And that's a noted reality in our, in our governmental state right now. It's not a happy place for um, American scientists, but that's where we are. And so LSST's role as a private organization in the LSST operations and future development of science is really, truly significant. So our current role is to continue to advance the science, research, and education of astronomy and physics. And we're going to do that by partnering as a, a full um, one-third partner one quarter partner, I guess, with NSF and DOE and LSST operations. So we have to come up with 25% of the annual rate um, for operating, which is about $10 million a year right now. And that will, I'm sure, go up and change.
us. We represent you at the table from now until operations and everybody has a say in how we move forward. So engaging international participation is a big part of my job right now and a big part of the, of the um, corporation's role. And then ultimately, our role is to enable science of the LSST community to really be able to come up with enough money for private funds to enable everyone to do their science and research. You've heard a little bit about this from Lucian and, um, and Andy about how we're already funding the collaborations and some of their effort for the workshops and such. And I'll talk a little bit more about that. But the, these are our, our current roles. So what are our challenges in terms of having those dovetailed with our roles primary responsibilities is how are we going to meet this 25% uh, um, commitment in operations, okay? Uh, we have to increase international participation. That's one of the reasons I was invited to come here, to talk to everybody and uh, spread the word that you want to get involved in this project. It's the most fantastic project to come along in a long time. So. At present, we've signed 20 MOAs, and I think you saw the list from Lucian. That's fantastic. We're happy that everybody that's seen the light has joined and is on board. We hope to increase some of those um, participants by adding more um, PIs to the list. But we still need some more folks to join in and get, and get engaged in LSST's big data and big science opportunity. Okay. So we still need to do that. We're also then, what I said was the enabling science. Our goal is to raise $100 million over the next couple of years, big challenge, that we can then spend during the survey and beyond to support science, real science. People can do what they need to do to get there. So international participation, I'm going to take a couple minutes just to talk about this. Um, an international contributor is a classification for an institute, an organization, or a consortium that agrees to share in the annual operating costs of the, of the um, LSST. Okay, and basically the leverage there is the contributor buys data rights, and they have the same data rights that are, are given to U.S. scientists and to um, Chilean scientists, and can then um, participate in the same way as all the scientists on the on base level. The terms and conditions of joining and buying data rights is via a memorandum of understanding, which you actually make with the corporation on the project. And, um, and each, currently, each uh, contributor um, would pay $20,000 per PI in 2013 dollars, so that's a little bit more than that now. And that's inflated every year um, at a small rate right now. <coughs> so, and the, the catch is there, I think, to recognize is that each PI, okay, for this amount of money, gets four support staff to ride along on their team. Okay? So that's a screaming deal. So why participate? I think the goal um, of early participation is to um, show you how, how to be ready for the data set, okay? how to use the data when it comes. That's the big key here. Okay, a lot of telescopes have been built, but no telescope has been built that will produce this much data. And how do we use it? What do we do with it? All those kinds of things you can get in on the, on the game right now. Um, you can get the know-how of the project, like Andy was saying, and was young learn about what's going on and how everything works now, okay? Um, especially data products, querying the system, um, methods for querying the databases, and how you get the, the data that you want for your science, okay? Um, and I think the kicker here is that you get to join the science collaborations, okay? You get to join a group of people that have been working for 10 years on this science already. There's a lot of memory there already in place that you can you can just nab onto, join the team, pursue.
proceed, interact with these people, build their own collaborations, and you get a job um, on the two-year uh, proprietary period. So one of the things that's pushing me to be here and give this talk is that the formal uh, proposal process for the operations funding has started already. Okay? And um, the, a formal proposal for operations funding will be submitted by ORA, which is the NSF um, contractor, SLAC, which is the partner for DOE, and the corporation um, to, the, to the U.S. federal agencies a year from now. It's not very long to put this thing together. So the proposal by the end of this calendar year must include the detailed budget for all the activities related to operations. Okay, that's a lot of work is being done right now. And it's extremely important that we get folks involved who want to be involved. Because we're nearing the point where um, there's going to be uh, a deadline. So what I wanted to do here is just show you a couple. Here's the WBS. The, the, Wash down version of the schedule for the operations planning. And you can see here where we are. Um, oh, oh. No, I'll just read it. So here we are. Um, the MREX funding began in 2014. Construction started. Um, we're here in this red line. And the ops proposal is due about a year from now. It's not very much time to get everything together. So the team needs a lot of information. They're trying to figure out the staff loadings, um, uh, all that kind of thing. Here I've blown it up so you can kind of see a couple of the key milestones that we're facing here in the next year and into the fall. Um, this fall, the full proposal will be reviewed um, and uh, we are submitting a final draft to be reviewed in in early uh, January, February of next year. So it's sort of a last chance opportunity um, to get to get involved. The deadline to execute an MOA at the current rate is um, the end of the calendar year. However, however, in order to meet that deadline, okay. We need to have an MOA submitted by October 1st of this year so that we can actually get it done by the end of the year. So that's my message about becoming a partner and, and, uh, and that part of the game. But I want to also talk to you about preparing for big data and inspiring big science. As we know, LSST epitomizes the new era of big data in physics and astronomy. <coughs> but really, the key here, folks, is developing new methods and tools to process and analyze the data so that we can get at it. We have level one, level two data products available, and the community and the project will make level three data products available, or at least algorithms to do things. But it's the community that has to come together to build these level three um, <coughs> software um, programs and, and analysis tools and methods, and then enable the entire community with these. Okay? We can make all of this available. And that's what the, that's what the corporation, I'll say, really, really wants to do here. Okay? We want to be able to help everyone with their science. The, the project is not going to be able to afford to do that. So the LSST Corporation strives to really be the national organization that can act as the unifying focus for LSST science and be, wide, be the worldwide advocate for that. So in summary, I just want to say the corporations here at Kim, it was there in the beginning. We're still here. We're just focused on different things now. Um, we're responsible for 25% of the operations <coughs> funding, and most of that money will come from our international contributors and participants. Uh, we 
we will continue to support enabling science activities. You've heard a lot about that today. We are supporting the science collaborations. There are workshops and meetings to develop the roadmap, active workshops um, in science schools. Um, we're now uh, funding this science school that brings together the elements of what I think are LSST. You've got astronomy, physics, mathematics, statistics, computer science, data mining, all of these tools that you really need to exploit this data set. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna build this school and grow this school so that your graduate students can come and participate and get these tools that they're gonna need. Tools that they don't get in a, in a standard astronomy or physics program. So we're focusing on that. How do we build a workforce? How do we get young people involved? How do we make this be really <coughs> Um, an instrument of discovery. And like I said, I guess the cap is here that we are going to continue to develop fundraising activities, which as scientists, okay, I grew up as a scientist, um, was in the science uh, uh, pipeline, became a data scientist manager for early spacecraft projects like Viking and Voyager, and moved on to um, other things, uh, uh, Cassini, and then I was involved in, in building the uh, deepest um, telescope on Maui right now for the solar observatory. So I know what's involved, and I know that fundraising, okay, is not something that we do. We're not comfortable with it. We don't want to hear about it. Give us the money so we can do our science. So one of the things the corporation is trying to do is take that load off of you, go out and, and really seek funds, for big foundations to provide, like I said, hopefully $100 million to support activities, not just at, not just at home, but abroad as well. And one of the ways that you can get involved in that is joining the science collaborations and really getting active. But you need a signed MOA to get David Price to do that. So I'll just close with, our goal is to ensure that LSSD is the most scientifically productive ground-based observatory in the world. We're working really hard, hand in hand with the project and all the agencies to make that happen. And we want you to join our team and be part of the collective effort to prepare the next generation and um, be on the journey of cosmic discovery. So that's it. Follow. Thank you.
as the coordinator for the collaborations. Jelko, who is the, uh, the AKA Steve Hahn of this meeting, um, will take care of the bigger questions, and several of us. So please engage us, talk to us. We can work together, we can make some things happen. Okay, thank you. So let's thank the speaker again. And, uh...